a year ago today to the date we lost in comedy we lost a real one we lost one of the uh what well, an icon on the british comedy scene and the greatest comedian you've never heard of <laughs> Welcome to Rob Mulholland Has an Opinion, the podcast where I, Rob Mulholland, have opinions about things. How are you? I hope you're well. So today's episode is, uh, well, it's somewhat of a tribute, really. Um, A year ago today, to the date we lost in comedy, we lost a real one. We lost one of the, uh, well, an icon on the British comedy scene and the greatest comedian you've never heard of. His name was Ian Cognito. He passed away a year ago today on stage. And I just wanted to tell you about him. I wanted to share some stories about Cogs and, like, keep his name alive because, honestly, like, he was one of the guys that I massively respected in the comedy world and uh, losing him a year ago was a real shock and it was horrible. Like, Cogs was an absolute madman, is a thing to say, right? Like, a lot of people in comedy claim they don't give a fuck about anything. Cogs did not. He was the most banned comedian in the UK, right? Now, it wasn't even particularly for the fact that, you know, his jokes were often very offensive, which they were. It wasn't even for the fact that he would often get very drunk and be a fucking asshole, which he would. It was for the fact, like, he got banned from most clubs for his signature move, right? His trademark opener. What he'd do is he'd walk on uh, with a hammer and a nail, and he would hammer a nail into the wall behind him. Just hammer it in, into the comedy club wall, and then he'd take his hat off, pop it on the nail, and then he'd open it by going, Right, now you know two things about me. One, I've got a hammer, and two, I don't give a fuck. And it is possibly the greatest opening of all time. Comedy clubs aren't owners, not fans, to be honest, of all the holes that were in their fucking walls due to Cogs. So he got in shitloads of trouble for that. Like, Cogs was a... a what a guy he was, right? Like, there, there has never been anyone I've ever met who has such a commitment to a joke. Like, Cogs would do literally fucking anything for a laugh, right? And he didn't give a fuck where he was. That was what's so beautiful about him. Like, I gigged with Cogs in massive theatres and in tiny pubs, and you got the same level of chaotic, mad energy from him, like, no matter where you were. He loved comedy, he loved being on stage, and he loved doing it, and he loved doing it his own way. As you can see in this clip, I'll play, I'll play a little clip now. And this is Cogs in a pub in front of, like, 30 people, and look to the lengths he goes to, man. The man's a fucking legend. Give a beautiful welcome to our wonderful and like the fantastic Mr. Ian Cognito! Right! That's why I'm the fucking headliner, because I think of things like that. I'm your headliner. You give me a line, I'll give you head. <laughs> I ain't the best comedian in the world. You've had some fucking cracking comedians on tonight. And I'll be honest with you, I ain't the best comedian in the world, but I am widely regarded as the best in my price range. <laughs> now, I'm doing this gig for fuck all, right? And I think I'm going to drag out of myself the fuck all gig I think I've got in me. Or as Adam once said to Eve, stand back, darling. I don't know how big this thing gets. <laughs> Now look, there's been fucking, I'm the sixth bloke on this bill, and I knew it was happening, I could see him, more blokey blokey, coming over the fucking wall, here they come, blokey blokey, no birds bit. So we had a little chat, a little fucking drew straws. Oh, that's funny, is it? <laughs> Things I do for no fucking money. That's right, darling. <laughs> that's what you call a clitoris. <laughs> if you're drinking Bacardi. So I'll post the uh, links to the full clip below because you've got to see the whole set. You've got to see more of him. Honestly, like, what a, what a guy to lose. Like, the thing with Cogs was, like, 
For me, like, I wasn't, like, I'm not saying I was his best mate, right? I, I didn't know him as well as a lot of other people. He was on the comedy circuit for decades, you know, he was an absolute fixture. I geeked with him maybe half a dozen times, right? But, like, every time we did, we really got on and we really hung out and we chatted and, uh... Yeah, like, I knew him in his later years when he'd mellowed a bit, right? Like, a bit of the uh, the edge had come off him. Like, he was, you know, he, was, he wasn't always an easy guy to deal with, Cogs. Like, someone who is that high energy, that fucking manic, that chaotic, that doesn't give a fuck. Like, he clashed with a lot of people, but he always made up with people. That was the thing. Like, you know, he would he would uh, have a big blowout with people, and then eventually he'd come back around and go, oh, sorry, I was being a bit of a cunt. And then, uh, yeah, it was all good. With me, though, we never fell out. We only ever had good times. Like, I, I fucking loved the guy. I really respected him. And, like... In comedy, there's a, there is definitely a brotherhood of comedians. You know, like, that isn't gender specific. You know, it's 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 all of us, all comics. Like we have, like I don't know. When I meet a comic that I don't already know, we already have a, something in common. We already have a bit of a link. And like with with, uh, with Cogs, it was straight in, and like he treat he treat me totally as his equal straight away. And you, you you notice that, and you respect that in people, and it means a lot. Like for someone like that to look at you and yeah, he's one of the one of us, and. Cogs always did that, man. The last time I saw him, like, this is what's so good about Cogs, right? He, he burned hard. He raged hard. Like, he drank like a motherfucker. Like, he, he was all, he always had a pint of Guinness in his fucking hand. But right at the end, he'd, um, he'd sobered up, and he'd really, like, he'd had a bit of a health scare, and he'd sorted himself out, and... Yeah, like, it was it was actually, like, um, Cogs getting sober was um, one of the big, like... Reasons I did, right? It was an influence on me, like, seeing Cogs and, like, seeing how well he was and, like, how well he was doing and how much happier and healthier he seemed, like, it was a real wake-up call for me. It was like, if Cogs can do it, fucking anyone can. And then, yeah, a few months later, he fucking died. <sighs> Devastating, man. I was so gutted. Like, it was fucking awful. Like, he died on stage, though. What a wonderful way to go. What, what a brilliant, like, for a comedian, dying with laughter in your ears. And, like, he, he apparently on stage that night that he died, he'd said earlier in the gig, he must have known somehow, like, he'd said earlier in the gig, wouldn't it be fucking hilarious if I just sat down and died right now? Like, man, he must have known. He must have felt it, because he did. He just sat down and died while the audience laughed, thinking it was a fucking joke and... I've seen people be like, oh, that's horrible. People were laughing as he died. And, like, those people do not understand comedians one fucking bit. Like, if I go like that, I'll be... That's the best that could possibly happen. Dying, like, with an audience's laughter in your ears. What a way to go. Like, what a man. He lived his life, like, so purely. That's what I respected about him. Like, he lived on a canal boat near Bristol, right? Grew his own shit weed on the riverbank and just lived his own fucking life and like, I don't think it was easy I don't think his path in life was easy I think you know he burnt a lot of bridges early on and I think eventually he got to a point where he was running out of bridges to burn but he was still so deeply respected by comics and deeply loved uh, for the flawed character that he was because we all fucking are and like but he was so good when he went on stage just there was an electricity the way he would just grab an audience the way he'd ignore the mic and just scream at people like oh it was amazing like i'm i'm, I'm oh you've got it like I'll, I'll show put some more footage in now like have another look at how fucking amazing he was because i tell you a lot a lot of fucking drink don't know that's my problem i had to see the doctor you get getting my age you've got to see the doctor quite a bit 53 if you want to know fuck off <laughs> and you know you're getting old when you look at the wheels on a suitcase and go Maybe that ain't such a fucking bad idea after all. <laughs> you know you're getting old when you lay on your back, lift up your legs and your bollocks fall into your arsehole. <laughs> you know you're getting old when the President of the United States is younger than you. Mind you, you know you're getting old when the President of the United States is blacker than you. <laughs> Oh, you think I didn't know you'd do that? It's not racist what I just said, it's what we call in the comedy business a fact. Again, the link to that will be in the uh, in the bio below. Like, so have a little look and check out more of Cogs' work. Because anything I can tell you about him, like, you will learn more by watching him and just seeing the force and nature he fucking was. Like, the man that had just a, an ability to make things fucking funny. Like, right, the, the last time I saw him before he died, he told me a story about his friend having his dick amputated. Now, <laughs> someone having a dick amputated is not funny on its own. Right, that is a horrifically traumatic thing to go to, through. 
But the way Cogs told me this story and told me about his mate and his plans for how he was going to try and use it in a year when it was healed, honestly, it was the funniest thing I've ever fucking heard. And I'm gutted that I never got to get a follow up on that story and find out what happened. So, yeah, it's a, uh, you know, I, I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know how to find the words to adequately sum Cogs up. Like, please Google him and find out more about him because he was an inspiration in a lot of ways. Like, he was a grave warning as well a lot of the time, Cogs. But his attitude, his uh, commitment, and his fucking raw funny. It's you know, it, it was it really meant something to me, and it meant something to a lot of people on the UK circuit. And he won't be forgotten. And I think that's a beautiful thing. So. Yeah, do go check out Maury Incognito. What a, what a fucking legend the man was. Uh, rest in peace, Cogs. I mean, I'm sure he's not. Like, if, if, if there is a heaven for a start, Cogs isn't fucking there. <laughs> and if he is, he's causing a right fucking stink. So, but, uh, yeah, rest your lad. You, you sorely missed, Cogs. You sorely missed. We could do with you all right now. We could do with you always. Um, so, yeah, go check him out and find out more of his stuff. Sadly, there isn't that much footage of him. He wasn't good at playing the game he didn't do the career thing he was he was real he was pure he was a punk at heart and uh yeah i'll respect that forever and if i can uh if i can live my life half as pure as he did you know maybe make a few more compromises than he did to make it a little easier then you know i'll, I'll have uh, achieved something wonderful in my life so rest in peace cox um yeah Go check him out. So, uh, yeah, you know, as usual, if you've enjoyed this episode, subscribe, give us a review, all that sort of thing. Tell your mates about it. Watch my comedy special. But, you know, in fact, watch Cogs today. Don't watch me. Go watch. Go find the video of Ian Cognito. Click one of the links below this video or in the description of this podcast and go have a look at him and watch the man in motion because fuck me, he was a force of nature. Um, yeah, if you wanna if you wanna donate or anything, donate to the Trussell Trust, right? Just Google them, give them some money, and uh, yeah, maybe leave a message in Cox's name. That'd be fucking lovely. Uh, but in the meantime, to play us out today, I will leave you with the words of the man himself, Ian Cognito. Rest in peace, Cox. When I have gone, I hope that you'll remember me by all the things I did not do but could have done so easily. I've just been trying to have myself some fun. Unfortunately, it's not been seen that way by everyone.